I modified the triple entry journals thinking about this particular class and thinking about the age level of students with all age levels. We know that people learn best when they see it, hear it, do it. And that kinesthetic learner, I feel, is really, that's a, kinesthetic learning is really valuable. And so I wanted to put in a, a, a column that included a gesture or a movement uh, to help kids take the information and put it into their long-term memory, as well as to give them frequent breaks, because we know they need frequent movement. So it's kind of a two-fold purpose. I used the knowledge rating guide more uh, somewhat as a pre-assessment as well as to activate background knowledge and I tried to change the language a little bit to be more appropriate for fourth graders or what something fourth graders could understand more. So I used the words, I know this so well I could teach it to someone else. I know it pretty well but I can't explain it or I have no idea what this is about. And so the purpose was to help them to activate their background knowledge but also give them a focus for learning. Okay, these are the concepts we're going to learn, but I really don't know this one. And I further used it to help me get an idea of where I needed to emphasize my lessons or what I could spend less time on. Today we're going to use a triple entry journal to help us think about what do we know about the fraction words and maybe which words do we need to learn more. So. As we know, we've done a lot of triple entry journals with our math vocabulary. And we know that there's typically three columns for triple, right? But we added a fourth column. That's our personal touch to that. What was the fourth column that we added? Why did we add the fourth column? Riley, do you remember what that was for? Um, it was for movement. Movement, yes. And that fancy word was gesture. A gesture is a movement. Now this chart that I have on the board, which matches this paper that you're going to get in a moment, has a fifth column. This is used then, a fifth one. Okay, this fifth column is where you are going to do your self-reflection and think about, how am I doing learning this, these words? Because these are important words to understand, to understand fractions. So, it says, how well do I know this word? And if you have a plus, it means you know it really well. You know it so well, you could go home and explain to your mom, dad, cat, dog, what a denominator is. You could teach it to somebody else. If you put a check, you know it, you know it okay. You have a pretty good grasp of it. You're not sure if you could actually teach it to someone else, because that would make it a little trickier. And then if you put that, it means I need to learn it. So now, so is the I do it part. No, let's we, let's together. Let's come up with a definition in our own words. What denominator means, maybe a picture, memory, clue, a gesture. And then we as a class can decide, thumbs up, thumbs middle, thumbs down, how well do we know it? Okay, so we're going to use the word denominator as the we part of it. Okay, why don't you each just go take a, just a quick minute and turn and talk to people in your group. What's denominator? Okay, I, Kelly was the last person I'd listened to, and I heard her say that the denominator is the number of parts the whole is broken into. Does that work for you guys if I put that down? Just the number of parts the whole is broken into? Okay. That's a picture and memory clue that you could, that you could do. Oh, wow. Catherine? You could draw an arrow pointing down, and you could write a fraction in a circle, but you know. That works. Okay, what about a gesture? We said for numerator it was up. Show me, just go ahead, everybody do something. What might work for you for down? If you need to, I mean, for, for denominator. If you need to stand up to show me, great, do it. Let's just look around and see what people come up with. What's a denominator? Okay. Okay, I see some pointing down, and I'm going to guess that the pointing down is because the denominator is the bottom part of the fraction. I also, I see, Alice, you're doing this. Why this? Um, the um, denominator is the whole. It's the whole, and the parts that are broke, the, the whole is broken into. So I think that 
Okay. You guys see that, Jasper? Circle, because the denominator is the number of parts the whole is broken into. That vocabulary word whole. Okay. Then last but not least, using this scale, which is on your paper, I want you to go like this if you think it's a cross, like this if you think it's a check, for you personally, and like this if you think it's a minus. Who thinks they know this word so well they could go home and explain to their parents what it's about? That would, you'd go like this, you'd make a plus sign if you think that. Okay, so now um, you're going to, we're going to do a think pair share, and you're going to complete the rest, these last two numbers, these last two sections of your chart on your own. Guys, I'm really, I'm really impressed with how I see you writing fractions as examples. And a lot of you, you're trying to use the right, you're trying to use that, the right fraction language. You're going, and you're looking back up and you're saying numerator, and you're checking the spelling by looking up on the sheet. That's important. Good job. I think a useful literacy strategy is a strategy that helps them reflect on their own learning. It helps them categorize or synthesize what they've learned or what they've experienced. I think it's really important for kids to understand the literary component of mathematics and for them to, to heighten their awareness that language communication is a really big part of math, not just computation and helping them learn strategies that might help them organize their thoughts or reflect on their learning, I think is a really important part of math. Literacy strategies can be extremely helpful at the elementary level, at all elementary ages, I believe, because that the idea of organizing thoughts, processing information, and reflecting is the core of learning. And I think it can and should start right from the beginning. memory clue that you could you could do. Oh wow. Good job. Catherine? You could draw an arrow pointing down and then you could write a fraction and circle the denominator. That works. Okay, what about a gesture? We said for numerator it was up. Shall we just go ahead everybody do something. What might work for you for down? If you need to I mean for for denominator. If you need to stand up to show me, great, do it. Let's just look around and see what people come up with. What's a denominator? 